Saint Paul de Vence in the south of France is one of the best preserved and prettiest medieval villages in all of Europe. In this episode, we'll take you on a walk through the village in the late afternoon and early evening when the lighting is at its most beguiling, the soft glow of twilight. And it's very quiet. The shops are closed and there's just a few people walking about. There's one main lane in the village and we're gonna walk you along its entire length from one end to the other and then back again. We have another episode where we've taken you through Saint Paul during the daytime and showed you the many art galleries and the shops and cafes. In the evening, it takes on a different character altogether. It's more tranquil, hardly any visitors, especially now in the off season, and you really get a chance to take in the physical beauty of Saint Paul de Vence. There's no graffiti, there's no trash, Nothing's broken here. Everything is sparkling. Even the paving on the lanes is precise and beautiful. Even the dogs have to be careful where they go. They keep the place spick and span. So if you want to see an old medieval village, go visit Saint Paul in Provence. As we walk around this beautiful village, we're gonna share with you some information that was provided on the Tourist Information Office website. They have a very helpful tourist information office in the village. And of course, you can look online at their website as well and learn a lot more. The Place de la Grande Fontaine stands in the very center of town. Redesigned in the 17th and again in the 19th century, this square has always been the busiest spot in the village. One of the features of the Tourist Information Office is walking tour. There's 10 different guided walks that you can take with a local guide. One of them is called History and Heritage. And they say that every block of stone in Sao Paul has a story to tell. A visit by Francois I, an inspection by Vauban, or the destiny of the great families that shaped that village. The walls, the ramparts, the houses and the towers have plenty to say about the village's rich past. Numerous narrow lanes branch off from the one little main street and descend by steps and arcades down to the road which runs around the walls. Saint Paul de Vence is quite small. It's just 400 meters long and about 100 meters wide. And yet within this small space, you're going to find that practically every square inch is worth looking at carefully. It is just beautifully put together. The population who lives within the walls is only 300 people, and yet each year it gets two and a half million visitors. So it can get quite crowded, especially during the busy season, say from April through September. If you can, it's better to come here in the off season. November, December, January, it's really quite lovely. And you'll find the shops and galleries are open throughout the year. The town is quiet and clean, spotless, scrubbed, so clean, no hint of graffiti. It's full of picturesque lanes of quaint corners and odd passages. The main street, and all the side alleys are but continuations of the original mule paths of the old days, interrupted here and there with steps and way too narrow to admit a car of any kind. Now certainly you could spend just an hour or two or three hours visiting Saint Paul and walk around, enjoy its charms, but you might find that you'd like to spend a night or two here and use it as a base for exploring some of the surrounding countryside. And if you'd like to do that, you have some overnight accommodations. Outside the walls of the town, there are seven hotels located nearby. And inside the walls, there are actually two lovely hotels. In the 20th century, Sao Paulo was discovered by actors and poets and writers. The 1950s and 60s were the village's golden age. 
St. Paul became an amazing film set, hosting French and foreign movie stars drawn to the French Riviera by the Victorine Film Studios in Nice and by the Cannes Film Festival. The first cobbles were laid on village streets in the 1950s. And today you'll notice that the streets are immaculately paved in what looks like a first-class work of mosaic art. Mm -hmm. The cobblestone lanes here are among the finest that you will ever see. Sao Paul appears so unlike our modern workaday world of hotels and houses and railway stations and shops that one can hardly believe that this place is real and that we are not seeing it in some happy dream. It is very real, however. It has its modern life of births, deaths, and marriages, and its ancient history dating as far back as the 9th century. Well, it's finally time to depart Saint Paul over to the bus stop. The buses come about every hour, and the last bus out is at 7.20 in the evening, so you don't stay too late in Saint Paul unless you're spending the night there. It's easy to find the bus stop. Just walk out the main gate through the little park across the Place de Gaulle and another block up on the corner and you will find the bus stop. Catch a bus back to Nice. Takes about one hour. Before leaving San Paul, however, you should consider visiting the nearby contemporary art museum, the Mech Foundation. It's an easy walk from Sao Paul, it just takes about 20 minutes or less and into the garden courtyard where you'll be soon enjoying sculptures in the yard by Giacometti and Leger and Miro and many others, including Calder and Chagall and Brock. It was founded in 1964 and it has got one of the great collections of modern art in all of Europe. More than 200,000 visitors come every year, and the museum is open every day of the year. In the summertime, it's open from 10 a.m. till 7 p.m., and October to June, same hours, but closes at 6 p.m. They have a marvelous collection of paintings and sculpture, indoors and out. After visiting the more commercial art galleries and shops in San Paul, it's refreshing to immerse yourself in some of the finest artists of the 20th century and enjoy some great works by them. Also on the property is a nice cafe and a library and a cinema and the garden setting. The only public transportation available is the bus and it's quite convenient. And you want to keep your eye on the clock and the bus schedule so that you don't have to wait too long at the bus stop. They only come about every hour, generally throughout the day, but get on the bus and it's an easy ride back to Nice. It takes about one hour. The bus will take you all the way back into the heart of the city. Some nice scenery along the way. If you missed our other movie about Saint Paul de Vance during the daytime visit, be sure to take a look. Of course, the best way to be informed about all the new movies we upload is to subscribe to our channel.